Welcome back to Faith and Flower. If you're new, I'm Robin, and in this week's video, I am starting out with some grocery hauls. This first one is from Costco. We just joined, and I'm really enjoying discovering all of the goodies and savings that they have to offer. Tell me about your favorite Costco finds down in the description box. I'd really love to know. Back in the summer when my parents visited, we went to Costco and we got some of this Barra Monday. I'm probably pronouncing that incorrectly, but we really liked it, so I got more of that and some more of these Wyman's Wild Blueberries. They are fantastic and they are great to pull out of the freezer and use for all sorts of things. I also picked up some of these crispy sea salt gluten-free crackers from Milton's brand. They are some of Peyton's favorite. And we tried some new things like these Unreal Dark Chocolate Coconut Minis. These are great because they are non-GMO, gluten-free, and soy-free. And they're delicious. We've tried some. These dried mangoes are something that I already know Peyton loves. My mom always has them in her pantry, so I was sure to pick up some of those. They make such good snacks. And on our previous trip with my mom and dad, I had gotten a bag of these sprouted organic pumpkin seeds with sea salt. I love putting them in our granola, so I grabbed another bag of those. And I was so excited to find these. This is something that is really hard to find really in any store any kind of ravioli or tortellini that is gluten-free. Then spamming this, we've tried them. They are great, so I'm going to get some more and store them in the freezer. I decided to try some of the Kirkland brand plant-based dish soap. It was a really good price. It smells pretty good. And so to save a little bit of money, I'm going to give up my Mrs. Myers for a while and give this one a try. I was also happy to find coconut aminos for a much better price than our regular grocery store, so I grabbed a big bottle of that. And also this Better Than Bullion, same thing, large container and much better price. Also for this, Primal Kitchen mayonnaise made with avocado oil at our regular grocery store is extremely expensive. I have been making my own and I will continue to do that, but it's really nice to have some backup that doesn't cost an arm and a leg. And of course, I bought a very large package of toilet paper. This one is septic safe and I hopefully will like it because I think it's going to last us quite a while. This big bag of limes was an amazing price and they look really good, they're huge. So I picked up a bag of those and I'm gonna show you how I make sure these don't go bad a little bit later in the video. And I also got a big bag of avocados. They did come in a bag, but I already broke those open and took one out to make some avocado toast. Instead of sharp cheddar cheese, I decided to pick up this Kerrygold Dubliner cheese. We tried it in the past and really liked it. It's a very high quality cheese. It's made with milk from grass-fed cows and it was a really good price. I'm always buying smaller packages of these bacon crumbles at my local grocery store, so I picked up some from Costco. It's a bigger bag and a better savings. I also found organic fresh zucchini there at a really great price, and these look really nice. So I picked up a bag of those, and I'm going to be using these in a couple of recipes this week. I'm running a little low on plastic wrap, so I picked up this double pack that they have at Costco. I really like their brand of plastic wrap. It works great, and the dispenser is so easy to use. So that's what I bought from Costco this week. I haven't bought in bulk like this in a while, so I'm going to need to get used to storing these things properly so that they last. And I have some ideas for food storage I'm going to show you later in the video, but first I'm going to show you what I bought at our regular grocery store, the place that we shop the most often, and here in Texas, that's H-E-B. Each week when I shop, I think about the areas that I need to stock up on. And this week it was some things for our freezer, namely frozen vegetables, because they were such a great price at HEB this week. So I got some green peas, some chopped spinach, broccoli, a couple different types of green beans. And the reason why is because these premier ones, I really like to cook as a side dish and the regular cut beans I like to use in soups. I also really like putting lima beans in vegetable soup and most of these vegetables will be used for soups and things like that. I just love having our freezer filled with these vegetables. They're a great way to keep fresh vegetables for a long period of time. And so whenever I see a sale at HEB, I like to stock up. 
Peyton has asked several times lately for ham to go in sandwiches for his lunches, so I found this Frick's Bone and Ham for a much better price than the spiral sliced hams. So I'm going to divvy that up and use some for sandwiches and some other meals and stock our freezer a bit. I also picked up some pasture raised eggs, some lactose free whole milk, and I just discovered this Mutopia cottage cheese, which is a lactose free cottage cheese. This is the first time I've seen it. Maybe it's been around for a while, but I have an idea for some recipes. So I went ahead and bought one to use now and one to keep in the freezer. I keep a little bit of flour on hand in our prepper pantry and I just went through a bag. So I wanted to replace that. The same with the old fashioned rolled oats and these are the gluten free ones. We use that for making granola so I go through it pretty quickly and if you're new here, our son needs to eat gluten free so most of my recipes are gluten free with the exception of bread. For produce this week, I picked up some red grapes. They make such a good snack and we had some organic pears recently from Trader Joe's that were really good. So I'm hoping that this bag from HEB is going to be good as well. And pink lady apples are Peyton's favorite. He likes to take an apple almost every day for lunch. I got some sweet onions and some baby potatoes. Patrick and I share a grapefruit for breakfast almost every day. And the ones that we have been getting that are grown here in Texas are amazing. They're a little on the small side, but they are so juicy and sweet. So of course I had to get a bag of those. I always like to make sure I have plenty of these dark chocolate morsels in our pantry. They're great for making chocolate chip cookies or anything else. They do not have any soy and it's really hard to find chocolate that doesn't have soy. So those are always in our pantry. And we had some risotto this past week that I made in the Instant Pot. I'm gonna show you guys that recipe soon. So I made sure to get more because it was a big hit with our family. I also thought I'd give this Mama Mary's gluten-free pizza crust a try. They're like small individual sized pizza crust and we'll see if Peyton likes those. I recently ran out of my Herb de Provence so I had to make sure to get some more of that. That's really good in ratatouille. picked up a box of these paper sandwich bags. I was about to run out of the wax paper bags that I was using to wrap up Peyton's granola bars, so I thought we'd give these a try. And that's everything that I bought at the grocery store this week. We stocked up on a lot of things and a lot of things we're gonna use right away. Because I bought some produce, especially in bulk, I wanna make sure that I preserve it really well. So later in the video, I'm gonna show you some things that I am trying to make sure that none of this great food goes to waste. I just received these beautiful candles from Bridge the Gap and I wanted to give them a little shout out. I was recently contacted by Audra, the owner of Bridge the Gap, whose mother is one of our subscribers. I love supporting small businesses and was delighted with the qualities of these beautifully scented candles. They are hand poured and made with all natural soy grown in America's Midwest. They each have lids made from American cedar wood and these three cents small town bakery, evening hayride and pumpkin souffle are warm and cozy Cozy, just perfect for fall and winter time. I am going to put a link down in the description box so you can visit Bridge the Gap's online store and help support this great small business. Okay, I have a confession. I am in the habit of buying a big bag of lemons or limes, using about half of them and then the other half start to go bad and so I am going to need to come up with a better solution. I've done this in the past but I haven't been very consistent with it so I'm going to change that because I do not want to let these gorgeous limes that I bought from Costco go to waste so I'm going to juice them all. I'm going to make some guacamole and with the juice that I don't use for that I'm going to portion out into an ice cube tray, freeze it, and then vacuum seal them so that I can use a portion at a time and I don't waste any of it.
just like with lemons and limes, sometimes when I buy a big bag of avocados, I struggle to use them all before they start to go bad. And these are really nice ones and I don't wanna waste any of it. So I'm going to make a big batch of guacamole. I'm going to divide it up in a larger tray, freeze it and save it for later. If you don't wanna make the guacamole, you could definitely do it with just the avocado. I would mash them up, maybe add a little bit of lime juice, but they should stay really pretty and green even without in the freezer. And to ensure that they stay extra fresh in the freezer, that they don't get icy or freezer burnt, I'm going to vacuum seal them. really have a recipe for guacamole. I just sort of put in what I like and I keep it really mild and simple most of the time. This time I'm just adding a bunch of jalapenos. These are the pickled type that are quite mild. I chop those up. I add just a little bit of minced garlic, some salt and pepper, and I like to add in minced dried onions because I don't like a really strong fresh onion flavor in my guacamole all of the time. I do switch that out every once in a while, but for this batch, it's going to be pretty plain. And after I thaw them out, if I want to spice it up a little bit, I can always add something before I serve it. I bought this Super Cubes container a while ago and I have it in my Amazon store. So if you're looking for something like this, you can find the link for that down in the description box. And as the name suggests, it's designed to freeze individual portions of soup, but you can use it for other things too. And I'm going to use it to save the guacamole today. Each section of the container will hold a cup of liquid or whatever it is that you choose to put in there. And that is going to be just the right amount for a serving of guacamole for the three of us. There's also a half cup marking on the inside, so you can fill it to that point if you want a smaller portion. And I was thinking if I was just going to save the avocado all by itself, I would fill it to that halfway mark and that would be about the perfect size for making a couple pieces of avocado toast. to put these in the freezer overnight and I'll take them out tomorrow to vacuum seal them. And we are going to enjoy a little bit of this guacamole right now. I love avocados and these were so nice and creamy. So I'm glad I didn't do too much to doctor up the guacamole and just let those avocados shine. Next 
Tuesday, the lime juice squares were frozen and so were the guacamole squares. So I'm going to package them up in some vacuum sealed containers. And I have a vacuum sealer, which I really enjoy using. The problem with it is I can't open the bag, pull a couple of squares out and reseal the same bag. I have to get a new one. So I've been looking for a solution. So Mary from Mary's Nest has talked about these zwilling bags and they also have really nice glass containers. And if you follow Noemi over at Scandish Home, you'll know she loves these and uses them all the time. Several of you have let me know in the comments that you have some and like them. So I figured it was time for me to give them a try too. So these are resealable, reusable vacuum bags from Zwilling and they are made of a BPA free plastic. So I don't worry about putting our food in there. And I love that you can reuse these bags and all you have to do is wash them out afterwards. I really did not like having to throw away bags, whether they be Ziploc bags or uh, vacuum sealed bags. And all you need is this little device and it's got a valve that will help you suck out the air. And when I'm ready to use one of the cubes, I can just open the bag and reseal it and pop it back into the freezer. I asked my friend Noemi about that and she said she uses them that way all the time and they work really well. So I'm excited to give them a try for things like the juice squares and also for this guacamole. I'll have all of these things in the kitchen section of my Amazon store and you can find the link for that down in the description box. I think it's worthwhile to invest a little bit to save food properly so that none of it goes to waste. And when we decided to start our Costco membership, I wanted to make sure that if I bought in bulk, that I'd be able to not let any of it go to waste. It really defeats the purpose <laughs> of the savings that you get when you buy in bulk if you don't actually use it all. Next up is a recipe for cabbage soup. And if you saw my last video, I was doing some searches for recipes that were popular back in the Great Depression and loads of different versions of this soup popped up. We tried it out. I made just a slight modification here or there <laughs> and I will have the original recipe linked down in the description box, but it's basically a vegetable soup recipe using a lot of cabbage and using some ground beef as the base. It's super healthy, super economical and a great way to stretch your ground beef. recipe you'll need one medium head of cabbage chopped, one cup of chopped celery, one cup of chopped onion, eight cups of water, one teaspoon of beef bouillon granules or concentrate, a tablespoon of salt, two teaspoons of pepper, one and a half pounds of ground beef. I used about a pound to stretch it out even more, browned and drained, two cans of tomato sauce. I substituted one can of diced tomatoes instead of the sauce one tablespoon of brown sugar, and a quarter cup of ketchup, which is something that I've never put in my soup before, but it was really good. Recipe did call for it, but I did have a couple of carrots, so I chopped those up and put it in as well. And I had a bunch of diced zucchini left over from the ratatouille I made earlier in the week with all of those really great zucchini, and I threw those in too. 
As you'll see when you look at the recipe, I changed up how I put everything together a little bit too. I really like to brown the ground beef along with the onions, the celery, and the carrots, and then add the rest of the ingredients. But I'm sure if you follow the recipe, it will come out great. <laughs> just do what seems to work for you best. I just think that browning the meat along with those aromatic vegetables really bumps up the flavor, so that's why I do it that way. Cabbage is generally a very inexpensive vegetable and it's a great way to stretch a meal to make it really satisfying and add a lot of nutrition too. So I know that's why this soup was so popular back in the Great Depression. And I think you can use this basic recipe and switch up the vegetables in pretty much endless possibilities. brown sugar and ketchup are not something that I usually do when I'm making soup, but I think it was a great addition to this recipe because that sweetness really offset the bitterness of the cabbage and it was really good. My family loved it. So I made a huge batch as you can see. So we had some for dinner that night. I saved some for lunch and I froze some too. For the portion that I saved for lunch, I used one of the glass containers from Zwilling that you can also vacuum pack. <laughs> so this is a great way to save things in the refrigerator. They're also freezer and oven safe. So I can see that this would be a really great storage system and would have a lot of uses for making sure that your food really lasts and stays tasting really good. Zwilling even guarantees that it will make your food last five times longer than normal. So this is new to me. I haven't really tried it out, but it makes sense because removing all of the air is what keeps food staying fresher longer. to the soup I froze all of the juice from the lemons I had in the refrigerator and now when I need lemon juice or I just want to get out one portion of soup for lunch or something I can grab them out and reseal these bags and reuse them for another time and as you can see I packaged up our cheeses so they'll last a long time too in our refrigerator I need to freeze bananas I think I can do a better job as you can see these are a little icy <laughs> these are some of the blueberries that I bought from Costco and I'm gonna use both of those to make some protein power pancakes for breakfast this is a recipe that I have had for years and I love them and Peyton loves them too, but I have been out of the practice of making them and it occurred to me this week that I probably haven't shown them on my channel before. So when I decided to make them this week, I thought I'd grab my camera and record it for you. They are really good and as the title indicates, they are packed with protein. First of all, you'll need to grind up a cup of oats. And of course I'm using gluten-free oats and I can do this really easily in my blender and then add all of the other ingredients. You'll need one medium banana, a half a cup of cottage cheese, four eggs, a quarter cup of milk, two teaspoons of baking powder, a teaspoon of vanilla, a teaspoon of cinnamon or pumpkin spice, and you can throw in some blueberries or chocolate chips. Full recipe will be down in the description box if you would like to copy and paste. Blend everything until smooth. There will be a few lumps from the cottage cheese, but that's not a problem. Thank you. 
You can fold in whatever you like as an add-in. I'm using some blueberries today. I think mini chocolate chips would be great or any type of nut or other berries that you like. Set your griddle or large frying pan over medium heat and then lightly oil or butter. Ladle in the batter, cook until bubbles appear, and then turn on the other side and cook until golden. While the pancakes were cooking, I decided to go ahead and process some more of the oats so that I would have oat flour for other recipes and also to make this one a little bit quicker next time. Oat flour has become more popular recently and you can actually buy it at the store, but this is all it is, so you can save a lot of money by just making your own. only are these pancakes packed with protein they are just so delicious and the oats are really great for heart health for lowering cholesterol and they will stick with you throughout the day so you're gonna really feel satiated after this top with a little bit of maple syrup and enjoy to some Austin antics and a little bit of cleaning. Austin really needed a bath and we've never bathed him inside before. I actually thought it would really freak him out to make him get in the bathtub. But as you can see, he just sort of followed me in there <laughs> and he was wagging so he really liked it. It was a lot easier for me as well and I didn't feel bad about washing him with cold water while it was cold outside. He could enjoy some nice warm water inside. One of the other reasons why I was hesitant to wash him inside was all of the hair that he loses whenever I bathe him. So I brush him a lot before we give him a bath, but still a ton comes off as you'll see. So I search for something that would help trap all of the hair and keep it from going down the drain. And I'm trying out this little gadget that I found on Amazon and I also found at our Walmart close by. It's called the Tub Shroom, and apparently it's one of those things that have been in infomercials on television, and I'm hoping that it's gonna work because you won't believe how much hair comes off, and this could cause a real problem for our drain and our septic system. So I gave it a try, and it worked pretty well. See what I mean with the hair? There's already a ton collecting around the drain. So I reached in to try to grab out what I could and make sure that none of it was going down the drain, but it looks like the little hair trapper is really working. It's grabbing all of the hair and saving our drains from a really bad clog. I think this is something that I'm going to keep in our tub so that if anyone uses the shower that has long hair or whatever, we can just capture all of that and keep it from becoming a problem. I'm going to also check out the one they have for the shower and see about using that in our bathroom. In any case, I'm really glad that we gave this a shot. This was such an easy way to bathe Austin, and I'm telling you, he was really dirty. <laughs> so we can do it more often when we do it inside, and I think he really liked it. So obviously Austin is really happy and I have this tub to deal with now. <laughs> 
I just rinsed it really well to gather up all the hair in the tub shroom, remove that, and then just gave it a really thorough cleaning. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope it gave you lots of homemaking inspiration for your week ahead. If you did, make sure that you give it a thumbs up. And if you are new here and haven't already done so, I want to invite you to subscribe. We'd really love to have you join us here at Faith in Flower. You can meet all of the great subscribers down in the comment section and make sure to leave a comment below because I love hearing from you. Join me again next Sunday at two o'clock right here on YouTube at Faith and Flower. And until then, I hope you have a wonderful week. Thanks for watching and God bless.